Okay, YouTubers, in this video we're going to discuss the area of a sector of a circle and we're going to actually start by uh, deriving the formula for this. I think it's good for people to see where it actually comes from because we can derive it reasonably. It's not a hard thing to derive. But uh, after that we're going to work through a couple of examples and, and yeah, we'll just go from there. So let's go ahead and get started. Yes, um, let us say what it is that we're trying to find in the first place. Uh, we have a circle with a central angle. Okay, so a central angle, of course, is some angle that's uh, coming out of the focus of the circle here. And we'll call this angle theta for the sake of convenience. Uh, but theta in this case, and you know, I'm going to label it out here. We say theta, this angle theta. Just know that I'm labeling this angle on the inside. I'm about to shade it in, though. Uh, but we know some things about this circle. Of course, we would need to know the radius here. Um, you know, we don't necessarily need to know the arc length in this one. So we can just basically say theta. And, and I didn't have to label that there, but let's say I wanted to find the area of this sector right here. So this, this kind of shaded region right there. I don't want the area of the whole thing. Well, I'll tell you what, in order to derive this formula, what we could do is we could actually set up a proportion. And that proportion is going to work like this. Uh, we could say that the area of this sector, we'll call it A. So this is, this is the area of sector. This is, this is sector area. And that's just that little part that we colored in up there. The area of the sector compares to the area of the whole circle, which of course the area of an entire circle is pi r squared. As the angle theta, which is just this, this angle that's in this little sector area, you know, up here, compares to the angle of the entire circle. So, so like one full rotation of the entire circle would be the angle of the entire circle. And we know that one full rotation of a circle is 2 pi, and we're doing this in radians, okay? So we say 2 pi radians is one full rotation. So again, uh, we could say, you know, let's, let's label a few things here. I mean, if you were taking notes, you could write this down, entire area of circle, okay? So the area of just the piece compares to the area of the entire circle, just as the, air, the, the angle, angle of the sector compares to uh, entire circle angle. Okay, so it, it's, like, it's like saying this, like if, you know, for example, you were to work a half of an hour at your job, you know, you get paid per hour, half an hour at your job, you'd make half of your original wage because if you worked a full hour, you get paid the full wage. You know, it's just it's a proportional sense. So the bottom line is this, we wanted to find, simply simply put, we just want the area. And so to, to do this, we'll just go ahead and take both sides of this equation times pi r squared, both sides times pi r squared. And I'll try to keep this clean here, uh, but essentially the pi r squared here and the pi r squared we cancel, we're just left with a, we can write that down up here, we say sector area, this is a good one to write down, sector area a is equal to, now let's look at the math on the right here. Um, we would have an instance where this pi would cancel out with this pi, and we have r squared, you know, this is over 1, so r squared times theta is all over 2. So we could say theta r squared over 2, uh, but the more common way of explicitly writing this is uh, 1 half, 1 half theta r squared. So, you know, I think um, this is actually very similar to my last video that we did that had to deal with sector, or excuse me, arc length. But essentially, we say in the last video, we say arc length s is equal to theta r. Sorry, I'm going to take a second here. Oh, no, that video failed to upload. So this, this formula is very similar to this one here, even though we're not using this. Uh, but we say uh, arc length is theta r to the first. Well, area is just 1 half theta r. And then we'll square the r because we're talking about a two-dimensional measurement. This has both length and width. But anyway, say this is the area of a sector. And you'll want to write yourself a little note on this one. But... Uh, theta must be in radians. This is like a requirement, okay? So let's go ahead and do a couple of examples using our brand spanking new formula we just pulled out of the box. Um, let's do it. Let's say we had a circle with radius, and we'll call this radius 4 inches. This is a nice easy number to deal with here. And we say theta. We'll do a central angle of pi, pi force. You know, like this is the same thing as 45 degrees. But, you know, not a, not a bad idea. We can go ahead and start by sketching our central angle here. We say, all right, well, I've got my radius here. This is a pi force. This is 45 degrees. This is a pi force. Uh, and then radius is equal to 4 inches. Um, so, yeah, we just want the, the area of this sector up here. So we say area. Area is 1 half 
theta times r squared, where r in this case is 4 inches, and then theta in this case, which was already written in radians, which is nice of, of whoever did that for you. I'm <clears throat> just saying. Uh, but we can go ahead and start multiplying these things out. Now, keep in mind, we got to do order of operations, so we need to square our 4 here. And this is the interesting thing about it. You square the 4, but you also take inches times inches, which is inches squared. And that is important because if we're finding area, of course, we want a two-dimensional measurement. We need square inches, so 16 square inches. So simplifying things a bit here, we could say, well, 1 half times pi fourths there. Nothing reduces. We could say, well, 1 times pi is pi. Uh, on the bottom of this, we get 2 times 4 is 8. And now we're taking pi eighths times 16 square inches over 1. We could see easily that 8 and 16, they cross-reduce. We have 1 and 2. On top, we just end up with this. We had 2 pi. On bottom, we get 1, or uh, we just say 2 pi. And then this is 2 pi square inches. So the area of the circle would be roughly 6.28, because that's 2 times 2.14 uh, square inches. So that'd be kind of a kind of a straightforward example. How about uh, how about something like this? We say radius. We'll go easy on you guys here. We say 10 centimeters. We like metric better, anyways. And we say okay, so theta. We'll go with theta is like 270 degrees. So now the unfortunate thing here is this. By our definition up here, you know, we kind of said it's pretty big time. We need uh, theta to be in radians. So we're going to need to convert our degrees to radians. So let's go ahead and take it times pi over 180 degrees. And so you see that your degrees cancel out here, cross cancel. We say, well, what goes into 180 that also goes into 270? Well, 90 does. So 90 goes into 180 twice. 90 goes into 270 thrice. And we can go ahead and multiply straight across now. We just get 3 pi on top. 3 pi, and on the bottom, 1 times 2, so 3 pi halves. Uh, and this is, uh, of course, I, I forgot to, uh, you know, sorry, 3 pi halves. This is a radians. We don't have to write rad. So we say area. Area of this sector would be 1 half. 1 half theta r squared, where theta we just discovered was 3 pi halves, 3 pi halves. And r is 10 centimeters. So we'll go ahead and do a few things here. First of all, we can multiply... 1 over 2 times 3 pi over 2. Straight across there, we get 3 pi on top, 3 pi. And on bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. And then over here, we say, well, 10 centimeters squared is 100 square centimeters. We want uh, square centimeters this time. And so uh, our 100 and our 4, okay, they cross reduce. 4 becomes 1. 100 is 25. And so in this instance, we get 25 times 3 pi is just uh, 75 pi of these square centimeter things. So Hey, lickety-split, that's probably the shortest video I've made in a long time, and uh, hopefully that helps.